All right, a couple quick reminders before we get going. Uh, first of all, be sure to say your name and affiliation before asking your question. Uh, if you can, direct your question by name to one of the student athletes, we would appreciate that. And a reminder that no video is to be taken within the press conference area. If you'd like to utilize video from the press conference, you may download it from the NCAA Digital Media Hub afterwards, or you may utilize the uh, electronic media boxes over in the next room. So with that, good afternoon and welcome to the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament first and second rounds in Portland, Oregon. This is the practice day press conference for St. Mary's. Joining us on the dais are student athletes Logan Johnson, Matthias Toss, and Tommy Cusey. And at this time, we'll open it up to the floor for questions, being right down here. Jeff Rapp, JohnsonPeaks.com. Matthias, I'd like to get your take. When you look at Trace Jackson Davis, center versus center, what do you see? What stands out about him? Definitely one of the, one of the best best big man we have in this country. I can't say this country, it's not my country, but <laughs> in this league, uh, he's very athletic, very quick. Of course, he's a great post scorer. So hopefully you'll see a great matchup tomorrow between uh, him and I. Uh, this is for anyone. Uh, this is Jason Quick from The Athletic. Was there any moment off the court this season that kind of, I don't know, was a turning point for you guys? You want to take it? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say it was started this season. I think it's just a part of uh, the culture that we have at St. Mary's. Um, I'd say it started in the off season. Uh, with all the off season work we go through, uh, a lot of player driven workouts um, and all the time we spend with each other, we just, we know what we're capable of. And uh, that seems to grow every single day. Is there one person who kind of orchestrates that? Uh, our uh, our old man up here. He uh, no, nah, he he keeps us in check. He just he's been here the longest. Um, he knows the ins the ins and outs of this this program, uh, and the culture around it, and uh, what we stand for. Yeah, Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle, one for Matthias and, and one for Logan and Tommy. For Matthias, you just said that uh, UB Garden, Jackson Davis. My uh, basketball head said maybe a Kyle would. I guess I'm wrong? <laughs> or, or could it be both? Well, to be honest, uh, throughout this year, when we go against good, uh, good beat, bigs in our league, we, it's not about just me guarding him or Kyle guarding him. It's, it's all uh, the five guys who are on the court helping each other, helping me and Kyle out, whoever we're guarding. And it's just, yeah, like we say, the good uh, bigs, we have to have team cover against them. It's not just one guy. It's the whole team. Yeah, and then for, for Tommy and Logan, the same kind of thing with Xavier Johnson as that their point guard and a very well-regarded point guard. Logan, your defense is pretty highly regarded, Tommy. You talked about that. Without giving away too many trade secrets, is it is it Johnson on Johnson or Kuzi on Johnson? <laughs> it'll it'll probably be Johnson on Johnson if you ask me. Uh, he, he's pretty quick. Um, he, he's definitely a really good player. We, we've watched a little film on him, and uh, we're excited for the matchup. We we like going head to head with good players. Uh, I would just further that it, it's kind of just you know who's ever sticking to him the best. Um, we know what we're capable of at the guard position and at the big spot with, in terms of uh, defending. We know that we have multiple players at each position that can guard. Um, so who's ever sticking to them the best, definitely we'll, we'll get that matchup. Jeff Rapjohnspeaks.com. Logan, this is for you. You guys are top 10 in the country, I believe. Defensive efficiency in Ken Palm, Bart Torvik, and everybody. Just curious, what are the principles, what are the tactics, what are the techniques that have made you guys an elite defense this year? We actually use bricks every day on defense. We hold up bricks on defense. Um, it's a staple in our, in our uh, practice every day. Um, and we just, we commit to one another and we, uh, we, we help each other out. We, we, um, we're very unselfish defensively when it comes to rotating and helping, uh, which makes your job a lot easier when you know you might get uh, blown by baseline or something, you know that you have a, you'll have your rotation man there uh, 
and we just we've we've been with each other for so long that we uh we we get the best out of each other and we expect the best out of each other so um we know when uh to cover for each other and we know when to make switches we know when to make things happen <laughs> we literally hold them out we literally hold them out on defense and if our hands drop we're going to have to do the we're going to have to do the drill over again so um, we're pretty disciplined on on keeping our hands up and keeping our hands wide and then uh, playing the passing lanes. Go ahead, Jason. Jason Quick for the Athletic. This is again for anyone who wants to answer. Uh, was there a low point or a hard point to this season for you guys? And if so, how did you guys get through it? I think it uh, it kind of starts with last season because we we have a lot of roster turnover with this, the same guys um, coming back and just all the all the things we went through last year with we went through some COVID issues we went through some injuries I think all that really helped us grow and we were young we were a really young team so um, being able to have the same guys back two years in a row I think it was so valuable for us because we knew we knew we had everyone back we knew we knew what we wanted to achieve and uh, we just set to it right as soon as last season ended. And if I could ask one more, uh, is there someone on your guys' roster who maybe is a little unsung, whose statistics don't necessarily uh, reflect his value? Kyle Bowen. Um, <laughs> everything he does for us, you know, he makes everything happen. He's, a, he's our glue guy, um, holds things together defensively for us. And uh, when he's hitting shots for us, that's is big time. So. Is definitely Kyle Bowen. For all three of you guys, watching Indiana last night, as I'm sure you did, and maybe watched some previous games of them, is there anybody to whom you'd compare them to teams you've played either in the WCC or non-conference? Uh, we made a – our coaches have made comparisons to the Gonzaga team. Uh, they have a really good guard and uh, also a really good big guy who play well in their in the little two ga two man game they have. So that's the yeah that's the main comparison we've had so far. Just check in with Zoom real quick. If there's any of the Zoom uh, reporters that want to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll get to you. Uh, while we're waiting for that, Jason, go ahead. I want you guys to talk about coach for a bit. How does he reach you guys? Like, what makes him effective with you guys? I think he, he's just, uh, first of all, he's the hardest worker out of anyone. So we know no matter what situation we're going into, he's going to be the most prepared guy, uh, whether it's watching film or practicing or whatever it is, getting the assistants ready to do their jobs. Uh, it starts with that and then just um, He's a really good person, so he, he sets the tone for us in that regard as well, that doing the right thing, he's a leader by example. So uh, it's really it's a fun guy to play for and a really easy guy to follow. Yeah, I would say he's, a, he's definitely like a father figure to us, um, always making sure we're straight off the court before we even step foot on the court. Um, he, uh, he holds us accountable and expects the most out of us uh, and demands the most out of himself as well. Does he ever make you guys laugh? In Sometimes. Like how? how? Mm. He's got a bad sense of humor, but still, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Don't record this, please. Don't <laughs> it. I, might not, I might not play tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. He makes us laugh. Yeah, he's a, he's a fun guy. When he's out of his zone, game zone or practice zone, whatever zone it may be. So, yeah. We're going to go to Zoom now, and uh, Jerry McDonald from the Mercury News. Go ahead. Yeah, guys, um, so many times when NC when St. Mary's is in the tournament, they're almost kind of viewed as kind of the little team that could. But now you're a five seed. You played a real tough schedule. Um, I guess the thought of maybe having to face teams like Indiana, UCLA, Baylor in your bracket. I mean, are you guys expecting to go and do some damage in this tournament? Is that kind of the outlook? Yeah, I think uh, having a difficult schedule this year prepared us. Obviously, this is the best our league's been in a long time, um, seeing as how three teams made the tournament. And there's a lot of other quality teams in there as well. 
But then also our non-conference schedule, we were able to play some Pac-12 teams like Oregon and then also Wisconsin, who's in the same conference as Indiana. So I think that'll, that'll prepare us well for the game, and we just got to go take it if we want it. We've got time for one or two more questions. And I'm not seeing any more questions. So Logan, Matthias, and Tommy, thank you very much. And uh, best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. We'll have head coach Randy Bennett momentarily.
All right, with us now from St. Mary's is head coach Randy Bennett. And coach, we say welcome to Portland, but you're in Portland quite a bit. So welcome back to Portland. And uh, uh, go ahead and make an opening statement, then we'll open it up to questions. Yeah, it's nice to be in the same time zone. First time for that. So it's uh, we were excited when Portland was our, our site. And uh, the, you know we ended up, we're ended up playing Indiana, and we all understand what Indiana basketball is and what it means, and the type of uh, blue blood program they've been for a long, long time. So we are—that's uh, what you want, though. You you, you want to get in the NCAA tournament and play against good teams. So our guys understand that. We're excited to be here and look forward to playing in it. All right, we'll open it up to questions from the floor. Coach, I'm Jason Quick with The Athletic. Uh, Logan talked to us a little bit about using bricks in practice. I, I've heard of that with defensive slides before, but uh, can you kind of describe the origin of that and what you hope to get out of that? I can't believe he's giving away our secrets. <laughs> yeah, talk to Logan. Uh, yeah, we just, the, the philosophy is, crazy thing, it's really helped. but. Uh, to get our guys to carry their hands defensively and play bigger and it just we just kind of the overload theory just make it a little tougher um, it's helped it's helped them carry their hands close out better be stronger there and I think it gives them a little a little mental edge they just they've done something that as a team that it's a little tougher it's not that tough but it's uh it's helped. They like it. They've embraced it. It makes it a little fun. They they make it fun, which is cool. How how long have you been doing that? Uh, two years. How'd you fit that into your budget? <laughs> <laughs> I had a little extra change. Yeah. Those bricks aren't very expensive. Yeah. Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Down here, Randy. Where are you? There you are. The players, I asked them if there was a team to which they'd compare Indiana that you guys have played this season. They both said that they said and that you said it was Gonzaga. True, and if so, why? Yeah, I would say it's a little bit Gonzaga, a little bit Santa Clara. But uh, they're like Santa Clara because they, they have a guy like Timmy. And uh, he's good. I say that with all due respect. I think Timmy's as good at center as there is in the country and uh, Indiana's kid uh, Jackson Davis is he's one of those he can he can just score and balls can go to him a lot and then they they play off he and Xavier Johnson and similar similar in that here's Nimhart Timmy it's a similar deal so uh, and then they they Run a lot of stuff, a little bit like Santa Clara. They're big like Santa Clara. So they're a good team. I've seen them enough now that they're good. But I do think playing in our league, obviously Big Ten's great league. But playing in our league this year has prepared us to play in games like this. There's just – I thought there's five really good teams in our league this year, and three of them got in the tournament, and the other two got in the NIT. It's best our league's ever been uh, in my in the 35 years I've been around it. So – yeah, all that I think has helped prepare us to play against a team of uh, Indiana's ability. Hey, Coach. Jeff Rabjohns from Peaks.com. When you look at Trace Jackson Davis, kind of what are the things that stand out the most? What makes him capable of doing the things we've seen him do the last four, five, six games? Well, obviously he can score. And not every postman in the country can score. Like, you, you, they can throw it into him. He's... You better, you're going to have to think about where you're bringing help from, how you can do it. You can't just let him go one-on-one -on -one down there against against uh, one of your guys. First of all, the guy will be foul, in foul trouble in a hurry. And the others, the guy, Trace can just score. He can get to get to his spots and make a bucket. But I think what makes him a good scorer is he's, he's really quick. He goes to his move quick. And that's where he reminds me of Timmy. Like, Timmy's... Trace is quicker, but Timmy goes to his moves so quick and he can go over either shoulder and he's just got a multitude of moves and so does Trace. So 
that's the that's the best comparison I can make is is Timmy to him, and the reason he's good is because he's can he can he can score and he's quick to his. You gotta have he, he's just gonna come at you. He's very aggressive at coming at you, and he's quick doing it. Coach, I think uh, any team that reaches this point, you know, you look at their journey, and there's always a, a time where it, their season was hard, where there was kind of a low point, and you guys had to overcome it. Was there a moment like that for you guys? And if so, how did you guys get through it? Well, the season seemed hard all year. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know if we had a low point. I, we played – I've, we played a lot of tough games, and uh, starting up with the Maui at Thanksgiving, and those games ended up really helping us out. We were able to win the first game, so we got on the winner side. So we played uh, we played Notre Dame, then Oregon, and then Wisconsin, and yeah, Wisconsin won the Big Ten. So it helped us a lot. Uh, but yet it was tough. That was tough, and then we were right to Utah State, Colorado State on the road, back to back. And then we played San Diego State on a neutral. Those are all those. You don't know it for sure when you're playing those how it's gonna play out. But those teams had good years. San Diego State's in top 30. So was Colorado State, and that Utah State's tough place to play. So I think all those things uh, were tough. They made us tougher. We won some of those games, so it gave us a, a true confidence as a team. And then we just kept getting better and better. But we didn't. You know, we didn't we didn't ever have a uh, a rocky point. I think we we're pretty steady. Like we we would bounce back and <clears throat> didn't lose a game at home. L little things like that that were some of their their goals on the season. And uh, so yeah, that's it's just been tough, tough schedule, tough all year. Our league was tough. It made us tough. Any questions from the Zoom audience? And I'm meeting you now, Jerry McDonald, Mercury News. Go ahead. Yeah, Randy, I'm, uh, I'm curious, uh, you know, the, the long history of uh, bringing in international players, of mostly Australia, but lately others, other countries. And I'm curious as to whether that, what you think that adds in terms of, um, I don't know, bringing in players from different cultures and the players meeting each other and, and becoming a team. Yeah, it means a lot of things. I think uh, I do like that aspect of it. It's uh, diversity, and I think it's good for our guys, both the international guys and our U.S. guys, just to you know have to be a teammate, have to work towards a common goal with some guys that are from a totally different country and have you know some some of their things that they they're familiar with are are different and uh, it, I think it makes our guys are pretty they care about other they care about each other and they look to try and make each other comfortable as far as in this place we live in this locker room we share and you're like I said you're going for a, a common goal and you have to work together but you didn't you don't have the same history uh, they don't know who all the high school guys are in our country and we don't know the the path they had to blaze to get out of their country so there, there is a part of that I think about that all the time that I think is good for our players um, it's not the only way to do it but it it, it has worked for us uh, I, I really have I've learned a lot from coaching a lot of guys from Australia New Zealand now we have Estonia we've had we've had Many other places, places, France, and uh, got Augustus from Lithuania. So, it's been. I've learned a lot, and I've learned about. You just think they're all like our guys are. They aren't, and uh, so to try and make them one team, play as one, is uh, is fun. It's it's. I think it's good for our guys, leadership wise as well. You really hear a lot of talk about how experience helps players once once they've been in the tournament. You know, maybe they don't have the deer in the headlights look. What does experience in the NCAA tournament mean for a head coach? What would you tell Randy Bennett in 2005 that Randy Bennett knows now in 2022? 
Yeah, it, it's, I think it's valuable. I think it's really valuable for players. We have five guys who've been in the tournament. Just the whole format. Like, once, once you get here at the site, there, I mean, you have no free time. You're, you're just trying to. You just run out of time. And uh, we just came from practice. We're coming here and do this media. They've never done that. They'd, we can tell media, but they don't know what the media is, looks like. They're in front of, they're sitting up at this table and people ask them questions. They, we don't get that that much at St. Mary's. We get media, but not like this. So that's where it helps, is you just know, hey, just calm down. Just take it all in. Enjoy it. That's what I would, that's what I think, one of my key messages, uh, two key messages to my players are, hey, you got to play well. We had to, we had to play well in a lot of games to get here. Well, don't forget, you got to play well. You're, there's no bums in this tournament. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to hoop. And the other thing is, you got to play well. You got to be focused, but enjoy it, because you don't know if you'll ever get here again. It's hard to get in, and I know that for myself. Is so sometimes I wonder, hey, will I ever get in this thing again? Because it's, it's not an easy thing to do, and things got to go well, and you got to have a lot of help. But those are my two messages to them. Jason, you've got our last question. Okay. Coach, is, it, is there a characteristic that you feel kind of defines this group of yours? Uh, for sure. There, I said it to start the year. I've coached enough teams that these guys are tough. They're just... It's pretty gritty, and they they stay together. They do all the things you want that you teach and emphasize that, hey, this is what you got to do to be a good team. They do it, and they embrace it. They, they have our, our leadership is tough. Our, our play is tough, and uh, we don't have – I've said this many times. We don't, we don't have, like, an outlier score. We're pretty balanced. I think we have four guys that are double digits between – between 10 and 12 and a half and I really haven't had a team quite like it so but what their their single biggest characteristics that has given them a chance is they're tough all right coach Bennett thank you very much best thank of luck you. tomorrow a reminder the recording of this press conference is available on the NCAA digital media hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com and transcripts will be provided by ASAP and posted shortly. Our next press conference will be at 3.30 with the student athletes from UCLA.
All right, a couple quick reminders as we get going. Uh, once again, please uh, say your name and affiliation when you ask your question, and if you can direct your question to one of the two student athletes, we'd appreciate it. And a reminder that there's no video to be taken inside the press conference area. If you'd like to utilize the video of the press conference, you may download it from the NCAA Media Hub after the press conference, or you may utilize the two electronic media boxes in the next room. So with that, our next press conference for practice day is with UCLA. We have on the dais student athletes Johnny Juzang and Jaime Jaquez Jr. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to Portland, and uh, we'll open it up now to media questions. We'll start right there. Uh, ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times. Uh, this is really for both of you, but I'll start with Jaime um, since you've been here a little bit longer. Um, you guys have had so much success late in the year, all three years you've been here. First year, we won 9 out of 11, one of the hottest teams in the country. Last year, obviously, with the Final Four, and then this year, you won 8 out of 10 while playing at a really high level. Has there been any common thread about uh, what has helped this team late in each of those seasons uh, that you can kind of pinpoint? That's a great question, Ben. Um, I think just going forward uh, or going throughout the season, you know, we start to figure things out, figure out what we need to do. Um, it's a whole learning experience throughout the entire season. So, you know, as you go on, you get better and learn from things that, you, that you've made mistakes on in the past. And I think that's just been a, sort of trend that's been the past past three years that I've been here is just, you know, learning from our mistakes and just getting better throughout the year. Um, yeah, I think it's just, uh, you know, coach developing us through the year and continually improving. Um, and then by the end of the season, you know, the last two years I've been here, uh, we've, we've been sharper um, down the stretch. Jeff Longville, WZIP Akron. This is for both of you guys as well. When you guys look at the Akron Zips, what do you think is the biggest concern for you guys? Um, you know, we've been watching a lot of film as of late, um, getting prepared for this game, uh, just trying to do everything we can to learn about this team and, you know, how they play. Uh, and, you know, they, they got a lot of great players on their team. Um, you know, they, they came off a little win streak coming, I think, into the tournament. And, um, you know, we just got to stay solid and play our game, uh, not get out of control. Uh, you know, we got to pressure them, you know, make them uncomfortable. Just kind of like the same game plan for any other team that we play. You know, uh, just be the enforcer. Yeah, no, they're a talented team. They're well coached. Um, you know, they're hot. They're playing well, playing with a lot of energy. And um, on this stage, on this stage, um, you know, it's always going to be a battle. So. Um, you know, just being prepared, being ready. Jason? Jason Quick, The Athletic. This is for both of you. Off the court, away from the games and stuff, was there ever a moment that kind of you look back on and that was a turning point within the team, something you guys went through or experienced uh, that helped you guys as a team? I think just a lot of our guys got healthy. Uh, I know Johnny had an injury. I've had many throughout this season. Jalen Clark's had some injuries. Uh, I think just, you know, going back, we, I don't think we had a game this year, um, you know, early in the season where everyone was 100%. And, you know, God bless that we're all healthy now. And I think that's really been able to help us going forward, being able to play as one cohesive unit and, you know, try to go forward and win as many games as possible. Uh, ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times. Um, I was talking to Coach Savino this morning, and he was talking about how Coach Cronin's helped keep you guys fresh mentally and physically late in the season, and you know maybe cut back on some practices between games and stuff like that. Uh, in what ways has he helped each of you kind of stay physically and mentally fresh this time of year when the games are their most important? Shoot, that might be a better question for him. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, look, we always um, are held accountable and uh, stay sharp and held to high standards, which is huge. And that's what you want as a player when it comes to growth and progression and development. Um, and, you know, you got to improve as a unit, but also as individual players, everybody improves too. That's just going to 
uh, lift up the unit. So, um, you know, I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, and then, yeah, I guess on my side, uh, going through dealing with some injuries on my end, um, really just taking my time in practice, uh, you know, kind of, you know, taking some reps off, being on the bike, uh, getting in early, you know, do, getting in the ice bath, hot, hot tub, everything I can to just try to better improve myself and my health. Uh, Tar Tarek Vettel here from the Daily News. Um, Jaime, for you, obviously the, the locker room's pretty much the same, right? But there's got to be a different feel. Obviously the opponent's different. Can you maybe pinpoint a couple different feelings coming into tomorrow's game? Um, I think we're all excited that there's going to be fans here, first of all. Uh, it's, you know, we're in a way better environment, or I should say way different environment. Uh, we're here in the city of Portland. Uh, we're not all in one condensed place in this hotel. I think we're all, it's a little more excited now, you know. Uh, this is really what March Madness is all about. We're not confined to just the hotel and the gym. You know, we can go out, see people do things like this, and we're all just really excited to showcase what, we, what we've been working for this whole year. Uh, Jeff Rabjohns from Pigs.com. This is for both of you guys. I'm working on a story on Michael Lewis. You know, he's a great player in Indiana now. He's, you know, an assistant coach for you guys. Give me a player's view, if you would. When you look at Michael Lewis, you see what? Yeah, uh, man, Coach Lewis is a great. Can we work on the? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, coach Lewis is a, a great coach, really sharp, uh, brings a lot of energy, enthusiasm, passion. And then off the court, you know, he's a fun guy to talk to, mess around with, joke with. Um, so he's just a great energy, you know, I, I would say. We're, we're excited to see him, and um, he definitely teaches a lot and uh, so impactful. So we're lucky to, to have him and get to play for him. Um, but definitely uh, very energetic, very passionate, uh, super sharp, yeah. And then, yeah, uh, to go along with everything Johnny said, which is very spot on, uh, Coach Lewis, great coach, uh, always brings out the best in us. Um, you know, very energetic, always getting into practice early. You know, talking to every single one of us. He's got a good personal relationship with everyone on the team. And sometimes you don't always get that from coaches. You know, he's got a great relationship with myself, with Johnny, and, you know, from top to bottom, great relationship with everyone. You know, he's a guards coach, but he still works with the bigs on their free throws. So he's just very versatile. He knows what he's doing. And, you know, we're, we're very thankful to have him as a coach here. Can you both uh, reflect on how your mindset is different this year going into the tournament? based off last year's experience, like how, how you can pull off of that? Yeah. Um, this year, we're definitely in a little bit, oh, we are in a different position. Um, coming in as 11 seed last year, 4 seed this year, the, uh, you know, roles are switched a little bit, but staying with this, the same um, mindset that helped us a lot last year. Um, and, you know, just going, coming to battle and you can't worry about, you know, in the early games getting, you're playing, uh, for, you know, lower seated teams. You can't worry about, oh, are we going to lose this game? You know, you just have to go out there and play with passion and fire, uh, just like when you're trying to upset a team. So um, coming from the same mind frame uh, is big and playing with the same fire. I'm not worried about anything else but just competing. Marla Ridenow, our Akron Beacon Journal. I just wonder if anything stood out to you about Enrique Freeman. He's leading the nation in field goal percentage. Zips. Got yeah, you. I mean, uh, leading the nation in field goal percentage, obviously that's a, big, uh, that's a big accomplishment. Kudos to him. And, you know, going in, we, we have our scouting report, we have our game plan, and, you know, we got to do a lot of things to try to stop him. But, you know, like, I, like we said before, Akron, they got a lot of great players. They're very talented. And, you know, we're going to do everything we can to try to stop them. Jim Coyle, Indiana Sports Beat. Johnny, you talked about earlier, you talked about uh, this year getting to enjoy the trappings of the NCAA tournament. You guys came out of the first four in last year. If you had had to travel, would that have made it that task that more, much, much more difficult, uh, being in the same place? Did that, that help you guys accomplish that? Um, I mean, I wouldn't point it to the travel or anything like that. I I think that, you know, it was just a combination of having such great game plans and scouting reports, you know, from the coaches and the players, just everybody just competing in the cohesiveness. 
um, and, and, and so much energy. Um, you know, I, I feel like a flight that still would have been there and carried over. But I did think about that. I mean, that's tough. For, I thought about that from some of the first four teams. Like, man, they're playing on Tuesday. They got to travel across the country for a game Thursday. I mean, it does seem tough, yeah. Let's go to the uh, Zoom room real quick. Is there any reporters that are on Zoom that would like to ask a question, please raise your hand. I don't see anyone raising their hand, so we'll uh, come back to the uh, main media area and right there. Uh, one of the things that struck me watching you guys last year in the tournament was, you know, there's some games where you'll have a handful of guys locked in, but it seemed like pretty much literally everybody on the team was locked in, valuing every possession on offense, adhering to your defensive principles. And it just, it was kind of mind blowing that everybody on the team was doing this all game long. How did you guys find that focus? And how do you recapture that starting tomorrow? Uh, I think it was just a group understanding of what was at stake. We lose, we go home. And that's the same thing going into our game tomorrow. Um, we lose, we go home, and I think everyone understands that. And when, when your back's against the wall and you got guys like these, you, you know, we're going to fight back and do everything we can to uh, try to pull out with a W. And, you know, I think that's what happened last year, and that's w what's going to have to happen again this year. Jake Murren, WZIP Akron. Question for Johnny. This season has had lots of highs for the Bruins, particularly beating a number one seed in the regular season in Arizona. Coming down the stretch, how do you replicate the regular season success coming into the tournament? Um, yeah, I think honestly we try to replicate it and um, even take it to another level. So, um, you know, you come in the similar focus, that game you're referring to, right? A lot of energy, um, a lot of fire. Um, defensively, bring heat, um, just mental focus, um, and then also just a lot of presence playing the game. Everybody was there in the moment, and you know it's one goal, and we're, we're trying to win the game. So I think we, you know, you bring all those things to these games and even more, um, because you know this is what you play for. March is what matters. Um, and I know everybody; we all know that. So we're all excited, and we're trying to take it to a new level. Do we have any other questions? All right, Johnny, Jaime, thank you very much. Thank Best of luck guys. tomorrow. And we'll have uh, head coach Mitch, Mitch Cronin here, Mick Cronin here uh, in a matter of moments. All right, Don. Go. With us on the dais now is UCLA head coach Mick Cronin. Mick, welcome back to Oregon. Welcome back to Portland. Uh, we'll go ahead and open with an opening statement, and then we'll have questions from the media. Sure. Well, it's great to be here. We get a chance to play under Bill Walton's jersey. <laughs> um, so it's been a while since I've been in this building. It's a beautiful place. So we're excited to be here, obviously. Um, different experience for our guys. We haven't, we don't have anybody on our team that played in the NCAA tournament um, with the public practice, seeing you guys in person. This is all new to them. So we were in the bubble last year. So that was all they know. So they've been asking me questions the last couple of days about all this, you know, what's all this type of stuff. So you realize uh, for me, I tried to not take it for granted, you know, so, uh, because I realize it's, I wasn't even thinking about like, 
you know, it's back to normal. But, like, guys are, like, wide-eyed, you know, to be able to experience this in a non-pandemic situation. So we're excited to be here. I know Akron's got a, got a great team. They've won eight in a row. John's a, a tremendous coach. So we're, we're completely focused on Akron. Uh, ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times. Uh, I have to ask you the number one question I've been asked by people today uh -oh. is, is Hep Cronin here? <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. And he's already 1-0 and in big games because he went down. Scott Davenport had him come down for their championship game. He got – and uh, my, he's, Hep's already taken credit for Bellarmine's conference tournament championship. So, But he lands this evening. Tark Patel, Los Angeles Daily News. Coach, just a little bit more on the zips um, and maybe yep. some of their, the challenges they present to you, uh, things you're concerned about. Yeah, they're just a rock-solid team, Tark. You know, um, obviously, uh, Castaneda is a great guard. But Ali Ali, can, he can make guarded baskets. Uh, you know, Freeman does a lot of things. Um, so, you know, they, they obviously they're not maybe as big as some Pac-12 Pac teams. But uh, they're, I only look at, like, who they are now. They went through some attrition. Uh, and since they, since they had a, the last guy that was off their team for whatever reason, but I didn't pay attention to that. But they're 8-0. No. <laughs> so they've done everything well. Uh, so they got go-to. They got a great guard that can make tough shots. Uh, they got a go-to forward that can make shots over people. I mean, he makes real shots. I mean, he's playing unbelievably well. And I always look at a team's stats, like their last five, their last ten. They're shooting over, like over 41% from three in that group of games. And then John's always been a great coach. So they play tremendous defense. They don't have any liabilities as far as, like, guys that can't guard the ball. Um, so, and they had to beat probably the, the three best teams at the end of the year besides them to get here in Buffalo, Toledo, and Kent State. Now, I know Kent State had issues, uh, but still – you know, that they, they've had to be good teams to be here. So they got our full attention. Hey, Coach. Jeff Rab Johns from Peaks.com. I'm working on a story on Michael Lewis. Yes. And like your thoughts on two things. When you interviewed him, you decided to hire him because of what things stood out. And as you've worked with him, what impresses you the most about him? Um, well, I've known Michael for a long time. So we go back to our days in the OVC um, when uh, he was in the Metropolis of uh, Mattoon, Illinois. I was with the racers, so that's when we first met. And then, you know, in our part of the world back there, uh, you know, recruiting, we had seen each other quite a bit. He was at Butler. I'm the head coach at Cincinnati. So, you know, Michael's got a great personality, as you know. So we spent a lot of time just talking basketball together and really got to know each other well. Um, so I was fortunate that he was available. I was looking – Darren and I have been together so long – with Rod and Michael, I wanted, I believe in hiring guys from winners. Uh, Rod's coming from San Diego State, tremendous program, great coach, Brian Dutcher. Michael had been with Tim Miles, who won big at Nebraska in spite of the way it ended. <laughs> um, it should have never ended, but anyway, uh, you know, and he was also with Brad at, at, and Chris Holton. So the, he could bring me fresh ideas, uh, but I don't expect to have Michael much longer. I mean, you know, again, I'm biased. Uh, the Ball State job's open. I don't think you couldn't possibly draw up a better candidate to be the head, next head coach of Ball State than Michael Lewis, in my opinion. He's talented. He's, he's got everything it takes, from the basketball experience to the coaching uh, to he fits that job, his personality. Uh, just, it's just, he just needs a chance. So I, you know, I, I think that's... Hopefully, hope, hopefully uh, he'll get that chance. But I don't expect him to be with me much longer. But he's just done a great job for us. Coach, Jason Quick with The Athletic. Uh, what was the hardest point of your season, and, and what did you learn from your team in that time? Um, I mean, aside from the injuries and the COVID, uh, we lost, we, we, the schedule sometimes does it to you. So... Uh, we, the, we lost three out of four now. Um, one of those was at Arizona. One of those was at USC. Great teams on the road. And uh, both those games, you know, we didn't get blown out. We, we had 
we missed a shot to tie USC at the buzzer. We lost in triple overtime to Arizona State. So, but we're not used to losing. Um, I'm proud that our program's at a point where like we just don't accept it. So that was the toughest part. Um, but I think it, you know that it helps you as a coach to evaluate what the job you're doing and that, you know how do I make sure we got to improve somehow. We weren't scoring enough points. Get it? We were dealing with injuries. But still, we had to make some offensive adjustments. I think it, you know we we came out of it a better team. So uh, you know, but the, that's what happens when you play good teams on the road in a big time league. You're not going to win every game, but uh, you still got to use it to get better. And I think we've improved immensely from the last one of those of that three out of four was that the loss at USC. So if you look at us statistically, we've improved a lot since then. So has there been a defining characteristic that has kind of defined this team throughout this season? Well, they get along extremely well. Like, we have great team chemistry. You know, these guys really like each other. They're all tremendous guys. Um, you know, we don't have overwhelming size and athleticism like some other teams. Uh, so we have, to, we have to execute and play great team defense. Um, but what I would tell you is, like, they're just a really – really good group of guys like they're really intelligent they're good people they really enjoy each other uh, and which I think is important because it, it, when we've had tough times it's we we can look at each other and uh, what do we got to do to get better instead of pointing fingers and I think that's why we've been able to get through the COVID and the multiple injuries that we've dealt with this year and I think we're you know we played great basketball in the Pac-12 tournament albeit not winning the last game. Marla Ridenour, Akron Beacon Journal. Hello. Hi. Uh, I assume when you said you were talking about the go-to forward who can make real shots. Ali assume, Ali. Yeah. It just does he jump out? Oh yeah. Like on film. You don't see a lot of guys on film that, that can create their own shot and make it the way in college basketball. I would say it, uh, in college basketball back. back it's been 20 years since I've been an assistant, but I used to tell Coach Huggins, Coach Patino all the time, like, there's a rare time when, you, 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 when you're going to give a scouting report that a guy can make shots while he's guarded. Post guys need an angle to score. Shooters need to get freed up to make a shot. Um, he, he doesn't need any of that. I mean, he, make, what I would, he makes some Kevin Durant shots. It's 6'8", just bang, bang, create a little space and just shoot it over you. I mean, he, he's, he's really, really good. And just being an Ohio guy, I know you – do you like to see another Ohio team in the oh. tournament? I mean, just – Happy for John. I know, you know, um, I know a couple guys on the staff as well. Um, you know, good for them. I know how hard it is. The MAC is a – being from where I'm from, I was, I've explained to our team, like, look up NBA players from the MAC conference. It's really a hard league to win. There's, there's really good players. It's a well-balanced league. It's like a mini Big Ten. I mean, so it, it's, it's great coaching, and there's historically been some great players. Um, Ali Ali may be the next NBA player out of the MAC. Um, so I, I'm well aware of the quality of play in that league. Jeff Longville, WZIP Akron, over here. Um, given that you guys went on a run last year, do you think that momentum has carried over into this year? Uh, early on, I think it was almost like a little bit of a hangover for us. So um, it was such a euphoric run for our guys that they hadn't, we had guys hadn't never been to the NCAA tournament. So it just, I think it took us a while to get it out of our system. You know, so much talk about the, the great game against Gonzaga, the way we lost that we, need, we needed to get that behind us and just get our focus on this year and this team. So I think that took us a while. But, you know, hopefully now with the experience of winning games in March, our guys understand how we won last year, which was attention to detail, execution, uh, toughness, defense, you know, focus on one game at a time and a game plan, um, which – you know, we had the mentality like we, we were not overconfident and it helped us. We have to make sure we're not overconfident this year. Jake Marin, WZIP Akron. 
Enrique Freeman of the Zips was named MAC Defensive Player of the Year this year, and Akron was the best defensive team in their conference. How do you anticipate challenging the Zips defense? Well, we'll see. Um, he's quick off his feet, impressive player. And they're a young team, by the way, so it's, you know, the, which I see why they've improved so much. Um, so, but he, he can block shots, both hands, qu very, very quick off his feet, a high energy player. Just a very, very impressive player. Uh, and, but I would say their whole team, they don't, have a weak, they don't have a weakness of a guy that just they need to cover for. They all seem to be able to guard their man really well. They have lateral quickness is what I'm trying to say, as well as they're extremely well coached. All five guys are engaged defensively for Akron on every possession. That's what jumps out on the film to me. Um, so we, we, we're going to have to execute and uh, be at our best. They're not just going to give you baskets. Do we have any questions from the Zoom room? If you do, raise your hand. There's a Zoom room? There is a Zoom room. And we do have a question. Uh, Patrick Waring, uh, MBS Sports Hour. Uh, go ahead. Hey, hey, Coach, you just mentioned uh, your guys being a close group. Uh, obviously, uh, you're there to, you know, to take care of business on the court, but can you kind of talk about maybe what the guys are doing just to kind of stay loose or in, you know, in the downtime? Um, well, we didn't get in until last night, but when, so there's not like not a lot to do right now. Go out to eat, and then there, there's so many commitments here. Um, you know, the uh, the guys from uh, Beaverton. You know, obviously we're new with the Nike. We're a Jordan school. I, I'd like to take them down there, but we really don't have time. Um, but, uh, you know, this day and age, man, these guys, I, I, they're going to be up here. So if you, if you get back in, I, I know there's arguments about Sm Smash Brothers. Does that sound right? <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah, that, that, you know. So that's the, the, big, the big argument on our team right now, is who's the best player at that. And I don't know if I'm saying the game right. But, <laughs> so that, that's the big thing right now. Uh, watching the team during the run last year, you played with an edge that every guy seemed locked in and valuing every possession defensively, adhering to your principles. How do you get that from basically one to ten on the, on the team? It wasn't just a handful of guys. It was basically everybody on the team. How do you get that? Well, we try to, um, you know, be, be in the, being that I'm wearing this replica jacket, and, you know, try to channel, our, you know, the things that Coach Wooden taught. Starts with humility. See, if you have humility, you're going to pay attention. And so hopefully uh, the Akron film has got their attention because they got some very good players. Um, and then experience should tell us that we, we need to make sure that we're, we, ha we have humility. If you have it, then you're going to prepare your best for every game. Um, and it's like my, Fred, my friend Chad Brownstein says, show me a guy, show me a guy that's not humble, and I'll show you a guy that's getting ready to be humbled. So, and we taught some people that last year. So, but we're not, you know, it's a little different because we're obviously a different seed this year, but we need to make sure we have the same level of humility and respect for our opponents. That's how you stay locked in, and that's, that's to me, that's why people stay focused whether it's in business, in life, anything. To me, the minute you lose that edge and you start, you start to lose your, your humility is when you're, you're not going to be at your best. All right, we're going back to the Zoom room. Uh, Tracy Pearson, go ahead. Hey, Coach Cronin. Where you at, man? What, what, what's <laughs> the, the budget, Tracy, is the budget hurting or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely there in spirit. Um, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, you touched on it. I wanted to ask you about that jacket. If you're trying to channel a little bit of the John Wooden spirit wearing that jacket. <laughs> Same one as last year, man. Same one. Actually, this is a new one. Um, so, uh, and, and don't, don't send me emails. I can't get you one. <laughs> Doug Erickson at UCLA. <laughs> He's the guy, not me. So, uh, yeah, look, look, when you're a part of the best tradition in, in maybe sports, but definitely college basketball, um, I might walk out in a uh, 
Bill Walton jersey tomorrow, so especially <laughs> since we're here. So we try to embrace it in every way we can. All right, that's uh, all the time we have. Coach Cronin, thank you very much. All Best right, guys. of luck tomorrow. Thank our, you, guys. Our next press conference is going to be at 4.15, and that will be the student-athletes from Indiana. Reminder that the recording of this press conference will be available on the digital media hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com, and transcripts are being provided by ASP, ASAP and will be posted shortly.
One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, ninety-nine, ninety-eight, ninety-seven, ninety-six, ninety-five, ninety-four, ninety-three. You getting anything? Oh, it might be a little louder. Let me just check. Ninety-nine, ninety-eight, ninety-seven, ninety-six, ninety-five, ninety-four, ninety-three, ninety-two, ninety-one, ninety, eighty-nine, eighty-eight, eighty-seven, eighty-six, eighty-five, eighty-four, eighty-three, eighty-two, eighty-one, eighty, seventy-nine. Barely bouncing his VU meter. Well, what the heck? Are we? Yep. <laughs> I'm making feedback here. <laughs> Ninety-nine, ninety-eight, ninety-seven, ninety-six, ninety-five, ninety-four, ninety-three, ninety-two, ninety-one, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, 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 ninety-eight, 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 ninety-eight,
the issue with the feedback was he was talking so quiet. I, had, I kept on having to crank him up, and then it scared him off when he heard the feedback. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't getting into the mic very well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, and then the feedback drove him back further from the mic. <laughs> Can you guys hear, hear yourselves from the monitors underneath the table? Yes, we can. Okay. I might I might turn that I might turn that down a little bit because yeah, that think, might be. I think you can turn it down slightly. Some of the some of that's the recorders where, are hard to hear, but they're getting rid of all the mic right under the other side. Yeah. Okay. So what's the story? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I gotta go there. You're getting ready to start the next meeting. Uh, for 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right, once again, uh, a couple of reminders. Uh, please give your name and affiliation before asking your question. And if you can uh, direct your question by name to one of our three student athletes, we would appreciate it. And a reminder that there is no video taken within the press conference area. If you'd like to utilize the press conference video, you may download it later from the NCAA Digital Hub, or you may plug in through one of the uh, electronic media boxes in the next room. So our next press conference is with the student athletes from Indiana. We have Race Thompson, Xavier Johnson, and Trace Jackson Davis. And we'll go ahead and open it up at this time for questions from the media. Start down here in front. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. Trace, uh, I know we talked about this a couple days ago too, but um, the four games in six days, 100 something points, on a roll, feeling good. How much does it just help just getting on a plane and coming here and just doing it again tomorrow? Um, Really, I'm just doing what my team needs me to do to win. Um, my teammates put me in position so I can get these buckets, but um, at the same time, it's going to take a team effort the rest of the way. And um, I know my teammates are eager to get started, and I'm just going to try to continue to produce for us. Hi, Jason Quick with The Athletic. Uh, I'll go Xavier. Uh, can you just kind of describe what your guys' itinerary has been, how, how early you had to get up, what your travel has been like in getting here? Uh, I mean, we actually left right after the game. Uh, after, we, after we won last night, but it took, we had like an hour delay because of weather. 
and then we had to switch planes and all, all the other stuff. And, and you know, you just, we just blessed to be here and, and get here and play. Uh, we got here about seven. Yeah, about seven, seven in the morning. Oh, I, I, I probably went to sleep for like an hour. Uh, he went to sleep for a long time. I don't know when he went to sleep, but everybody else seemed like they went to sleep. Yeah, uh, Trace, this is for you. Um, uh, the the, the St. Mary's guys, uh, coaches, players, Bennett, and the players, uh, compared you a lot to Drew Timmy. I'm just curious your thought. Do you think that makes sense? Do you like it, not like it? I'm just kind of curious your, your thoughts on that. I mean, yeah, Drew's a great player. Um, he's got a lot of pieces around him, but he's he's got great footwork uh, on the low block. Um, he does a lot of things for their team. So I take that as a compliment. I mean, he's a player of the year finalist. So um, overall, yeah, I, th I think that's a compliment. So, Trace, Charlie, Wish TV, Indy. I think we've all been on these w road trips. You know, they're, they're fun until you just want to get to the place you're going to. At what point this morning were you finally ready just – to get in your hotel room and get to bed? Man, uh, when we got on that plane, uh, we were there, and then they were like hour delay. So we we're like, all right, we're still enjoying the win. Then all of a sudden, we had to switch planes. And then two hours later, we we're finally taking off. And then slept a little on the plane, but it was kind of bumpy. And then finally, just getting here. And then the bus ride was like 30 minutes to the uh, hotel. So by that time, I was like, can we please just like get here? And then we finally got to the hotel room, and then I probably fell asleep in three minutes. So, uh, Mike Pegram from uh, Peaks.com, either race or trace. This Matthias Tass from, from St. Mary's. What have you learned about him, and what are the challenges he'll present tomorrow? You want to go first? You can go. Um, he's a great player, honestly. Um, he does a lot of work on the low block. Um, they do a lot of split game actions to where you can't double them. So, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough battle between me and him. So, um, but I can't wait. I'm eager to, and excited to go. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a good player. Uh, strong, big man. Uh, it's nothing we haven't seen before. Uh, and I think that as a team, we'll be able to uh, key in on that and uh, take care of what we need to do. Yeah, uh, Kevin Brockway, uh, CNHI. Uh, Trace, following up on kind of the point on Timmy uh, in um, the St. Mary's win against Gonzaga, they were really physical with him, pushing him around a lot, and so forth. Uh, I'm just curious about your thoughts. You see a lot of that bit in the Big Ten, but, uh, you know, uh, that challenge, and if they're physical with you, how, how, how will you respond? Um, yeah, I just think that just playing in the Big Ten um, kind of gets you ready for moments like these, going against seven-foot, 280-pound guys night in and night out. Um, um, I feel, feel like I'm going to have to use a lot of my athleticism and my quick feet, so. But um, I hope they're physical. I think they're, that's what their game plan is going to be. Wyoming kind of did it last night as well, but. Um, I'm just going to have to use my athleticism, really. Jim Coyle, Indiana Sports Beat. I don't want to bang on the uh, travel issue a lot, but for, actually for all any of the, the three of you, I know how tired I am, and you guys just played in a, a very physical Big Ten tournament. Then you had a very physical game uh, on Tuesday night with the travel problems that you had. Woody always talks about how you're young, and that doesn't really matter. But like I said, I know how tired I am, so it's got to affect you some. Are you feeling it? Um, Really, I think for, and I think I can speak for them too, it's like you think of it as um, you're going in and maybe you don't get as much sleep as you want, but you're playing one game. And this one game is could be the last game of your season. So you really don't have time to like hone in on how tired your legs are because all you want to do is win that game. So it's basically whatever it takes. And maybe, maybe our legs are tired, but we're going to play through it and play as hard as we can. X. It looked like last night. Name and affiliation, please. Oh. Name and affiliation. Okay, George Montgomery, uh, Fox Sports National Radio. Um, watched you play all year, and it looked like last night you just didn't have your legs because a lot of most a lot of your shots were short. Did you feel like you're, you 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 were kind of tired from the Big Ten tournament, and your and your legs were well, weren't what they supposed to be? Uh, no. Nah, I mean, I had, I had enough rest. Uh, I mean, I just put the ball short off the glass, and yeah, I kinda, I was a little nervous going to the game. I can't, can't lie because it's a different stage. Uh, even though it's another basketball game, but I mean, I got my feet wet yes uh, last night, so uh, I think I'm, I'm fine now. Uh, Jeff Rapp, John's Peaks.com. Race, uh, you, you had an off game the other night, um, very uncharacteristic for you. W what happened? I mean, some people were asking, you know, is, is Race sick? Did he get hurt? You know, just bad night? What happened? Uh, I think it was just an off night for me personally. Uh, 
I mean, and the Big Ten tournament had another off night. I mean, I'm just grateful to have Jordan Geronimo coming off the bench, uh, having a huge game for us. And he's capable of doing that for us. Uh, Trace had a big game, and X did what he had to do to help us get the win. But, I mean, uh, Coach said I'm a leader. I got to I gotta be better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that for – try to do that for our team uh, coming tomorrow. Top Bruce Sports Illustrated. And, you know, X, just to follow up on that on what you just said, uh, there's been a lot of teams who've had that play-in game where they were – when they got to Thursday or Friday, they did have sort of those nerves out of the way. I mean, how much does it help to have already have one game under the belt in regards to what you'll feel like in regards to butterflies and that when that game starts tomorrow night? Uh, I mean, it's important, uh, I mean, to get our feet wet, uh, not, not just me, but the whole team, because uh, it's actually our, it's all of our first time in the tournament. So, I mean, just to go, just to go out there and play uh, and, and get another get another win, win for us and go on to the next round is important. And I, I think I think everybody be ready going into the next game. Dave Griffiths with Fox 59 and Indy. This is a question for Trace. Trace, um, so many players can have their, uh, their legacies defined by NCAA tournament games. This is your first opportunity to play in such a game. How much have you looked forward to this opportunity? And now that you're here, just uh, what are your emotions kind of sitting around with, uh, with March Madness logos behind you and ready to, ready to show out on the big stage? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, it is a big moment. But at the same time, you got to stay level-headed, really. Um, I know Coach Woody's been put a big emphasis on me um, ever since that Big Ten tournament. I feel really confident in how I'm playing. But at the same time, other guys like this guy right next to me, X, has been putting me in really good positions to score the ball. And um, we just got to keep playing how we've been playing. And um, a few of my teammates had a rough game coming off. Um, I think they had some pregame jitters. But coming into tomorrow night, I feel like everyone's going to be ready. We're going to take a couple questions from the Zoom room. Uh, Dustin, you may go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, X, basically, obviously, Wyoming likes to play uh, play slow. St. Mary's does as well. What do you think you sort of learned from uh, that game, basically, just in terms of dealing with that kind of slow, deliberate pace? Uh, I mean, I, mean, I, we, I just had to take the chances of, of when, we, when I get a rebound or when my teammates get a rebound and, and, and try to get a, get a good push. And, and when I don't have a good push, set up the offense, uh, run my team, team like like normal. Uh, I mean, because it's teams that, that's in the Big Ten that play the same way, uh, kind of like uh, Wisconsin, honestly. Uh, and, and you got to take smart shots, and you got to got to play 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 great defense, and you can't give them give them any any slip ups on defense uh, to where they where they can score the ball. And Tyler Tackman, you had a question. Go ahead. Uh, Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Um, going back to the got to your guys uh, playing troubles. Uh, what did you do to pass the time? Were you, were you able to sleep at all, or I don't know if it's too old school to like bring out a deck of cards, but. Um, I guess what did you guys just do during those couple hours? Uh, I mean, we were just kind of hanging out, uh, talking to each other, goofing off, uh, really just enjoying each other's company, uh, talking to the coaches, talking to the players. I mean, there's not really much to do but hang out with each other. So, I mean, once the plane got off, I know a lot of us were asleep on and off, but uh, in the meantime, we were really just hanging out. And we made a TikTok with viral. <laughs> <laughs> Trace, uh, considering where this team's gone the past week, have you allowed yourself to imagine what that locker room would be like tomorrow night if you walk out of here with a win? Um, yeah, um, I think it would be very exciting, and um, we're very capable of doing it, but it's going to be a hard, hard-fought hard game. Um, St. Mary's is a great team, especially defensively. So um, it's going to take our best game, and everyone's going to have to play their best um, to be able to walk out with a W. But getting that first true um, March Madness W and um, – how long, however long it's been, um, that'll be great for not only us, but for our program. Uh, Jeff Rapp, John Speaks.com. This is going to come a little bit out of left field, but like Cody Zeller, Mark Cuban, a bunch of people were tweeting about the, the new ball, how orange it was, was it was slick. Is it different? I mean, what's, if you guys could just to discuss it, what's, is it different? What's it like? Uh, I mean, it's, just, it's a rubber, it's a rubber ball. That's what it feels like. It's brand new. I mean, when, when it's broken into, it's, it's a good ball. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can recall my, probably my worst game that I had with it was probably Notre Dame when I when I went two for nine from three because the ball is just it's just different. It's just more sticky and it's hard to it's it's a different English going off the back off, off the glass when you make layups. Uh, so I, I I would say that that's probably different about it. Hey Trace, or, yeah, Trace, um, your dad's Dale Davis. I just want to know. Obviously, you talk to him a lot. What kind of information did he give you heading into this tournament? 
Um, basically, the only thing that he really told me. After watching the Big Ten tournament, he just said that I just have to continue the way that I've been playing. Um, he said I'm doing a lot of good things for the team. So uh, we sat down and had dinner the night before we left, and he said um, just bring it to him. So basically, I'm just going to try to keep playing at that level. We have another question from the Zoom room. Tyler Tackman, once again, go ahead. Yeah, Coach uh, Woodson has talked about this year how he wants to build um, great men in the program, not just great basketball players. Um, what would you say is the, the biggest um, way that he has helped you become better men since you, since you started playing for him? Um, I really just think, honestly, with Coach Woodson, it's just accountability. Um, he, he, he's, it's all about family. It's all about, it's all about us as students and at, athletes second, honestly. And um, he puts a really big emphasis on that. He's almost like our, our dad in that sense where we can come to him for a lot of things and he's going to help us out and do whatever he needs to do. But overall, um, I've been blessed. I think I can speak for them too. I've been playing for him and uh, honestly just learning everything that he's done for us. Is, um, it's been a big impact on all of us. Uh, Mike, Mike Pegram from Peaks.com. You guys played Iowa in, in, uh, in the Big Ten tournament without, without Jordan. You played a lot of games without uh, Trey Galloway and Robert Finnessy. Do you guys, how fortunate do you feel now that you seem like you've got all the pieces in place? Uh, I think it's really good to have all our pieces in place uh, at the right time as well. I think we're playing some of our best basketball uh, as an all around team. Uh, but I mean, just having everybody healthy, uh, it just makes everything better. Uh, the vibe's better. Uh, you get a different spark from each and every person coming off of the bench. And uh, I think that Jordan and Trey and even having Rob uh, for the season right now, uh, it just really helps us out uh, in minutes and uh, just giving us those extra boosts coming off of the bench. We've got time for one more question. Yeah, uh, race, uh, Kevin Brockway, CNHI, race uh, plus nine on the boards last night. I think it was 16-6, second chance points. How, how important is that going to be to continue you guys just being aggressive there? Uh, second chance points are big in every single game. So uh, that's something that our coaches preach to, especially me and Trace and Jordan and big, uh, Michael Durr. But, uh, I mean, that's definitely emphasis for us in every single game. Uh, try to get second chance points, uh, even get a second shot up. I mean, if you can get more shots up, you can score more points. So. Uh, for us, that's a big emphasis uh, coming into every game. All right, Race Thompson, Xavier Johnson, Trace Jackson Davis, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we will have head coach Mike Woodson momentarily. All right, joining us on the dais now is Indiana head coach Mike Woodson. Uh, coach, congratulations on your win yesterday. Thank Welcome you. to Portland. And uh, if you want to make an opening statement, go ahead, and then we will open it up to the media. Well, it's good to be back here in Portland. Um, we had a long trip last night, but we made it here safely, and I got to get our players program ready to play a good, well-coached team in St. Mary's and their ball club. Hey, Coach, Charlie Clifford, Wish TV out of Indy. How do great teams handle fatigue? I don't know if it's a complicated question or not, but what's your answer on that one? Well, all I can do is relate to the NBA when we made the, uh, the, the championship run in Detroit. Uh, it's a grind, man, and I've always said only the strong will survive, and that Detroit team, man, we were so – battle tested throughout the playoffs um, that they just refused to be tired and because they was chasing that title and 
I think the teams, you know, when you look at all the good teams in March Madness, everybody wants to win a title. So, really, there's no room to be tired. I mean, you know, yeah, we had a long flight. I get it. it took us a while to get here, but we got here safely. And, you know, this is what we signed up for. Hey, we, we're here to try to win a game to see if we can advance. I don't want to go home, and I hope these guys feel the same way. Jim Coyle on the NS Sports Beat. Mike, Trace talked about uh, this is one game and you just have to focus to get past the fatigue. But is there anything that you're going to do to knowing ahead of time how tired these guys might be to change, uh, whether it's minutes doled out, rotations, things like that? Well, I mean, I'll take a, a, you know, as the game goes on, I mean, I coach pretty much by feel. You know, we only had three guys that played over 30 minutes last night. So... A lot of guys should be fresh and eager and ready to play. It's kind of how I look at it. Um, but I would gauge it as we go along and, and see how guys are playing on the floor. And if they're not giving me anything, then I got to go elsewhere to try to find it. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. Mike, uh, I know during the Big Ten tournament, Trace had talked a little bit about how breaking out of that slump that he had sort of been in for about a month or so was important to him. He's obviously been playing at a very high level here in his last week or so. What's been the uh, specifics to the difference in his game this last week compared to that month of February where he struggled? I don't know. I mean, I just think that he's, he's starting to find them. He was starting to find himself again. Um, and, you know, it doesn't hurt that he has a coach that's kind of screaming and in his ear a lot too. You know, I mean, trying to push him in the right direction. I thought the halftime of the Michigan game was it could have gone – totally bad for me and the team. Um, but as coaches, we always look to find ways to get players to step up and play. And I challenged him and like I said, he could have gone the other way, but he didn't. He responded. And his play from that half time on has been tremendous, man. I mean, he's playing at such a high level, which is kind of nice to see and we're all as a team of benefit from it. Uh, Coach Mike Pegram from Peaks.com. On Monday before Wyoming you mentioned, you know, nobody talks about the fact that you guys played a lot of games without Rob Finnessy and, and Trey Galloway. What did you mean by that and what kind of things do they bring to kind of complete you as a team there? Well they bring some seniorship. I mean Rob has been around a long time. You know, Gallo's still young, I get that. But when we put this roster together to start the season, those two guys were a big piece of the puzzle. And when you lose them, Rob being 15 games, I said 14 the other day, and, and uh, I mean Galloway 15 and, and Rob 10, that's a big piece of the puzzle when you're talking about some of the games that we've lost, you know, down the stretch of games, you know, we're, Maybe they could have been the difference maker. I don't know. I'm just reaching, but they are a big part of what we do, and we rely on those guys to help us win games. Woody, 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 Woody. George Montgomery, Fox Sports National Radio. You've been away from the, the college game for almost 40 years and stepping in, stepping in as the head coach. You, you've talked about this a little bit before. Are, you're kind of feeling your way. You're, are, how much advice are you getting from your assistants and how much advice are you just going on your own, your own cognizance? Well, I've always, you know, when you put a staff together, you got to work hand in hand. That's, I think, important when you talking about trying to build a team and getting players to play at a high level. But when I coach, I always have coached on field um, based on what I see on both ends of the floor. And, and yeah, I get advice uh, from all over the place when you got coaches around you. But at the end of the day, you know, coaching, you got to make decisions very quickly. And um, I've always felt good about the decisions I make. They might not always be the right decisions, but that's just a part of coaching. Um, but I've always said, George, coaching is coach. I don't care what level it is. If you can get your team to buy into what you do, 
uh, on both ends of the floor, then you've done your job. Um, it's when they don't buy in and they go the other way is when you struggle. And this team has really allowed me to coach them along with my staff. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CNHI coach. Uh, a lot of uh, analysts around the country, college basketball analysts, have, have described St. Mary's as being kind of a rugged team. Uh, I'm just curious about uh, what you've seen on film and some of the challenges that they're going to present on Thursday for you guys. Every team is rugged at, at, at this stage of the year. You know, I mean, I just came through a grueling Big Ten season, man, and, you know, I mean, that was just brutal. The way, you know, they let you play and get after one another. And um, so, I mean, you know, I've, I've watched St. Mary's. They're a hell of a team. They're well coached. You know, Randy's been a, a part of this program for a long, long time, and he's seen a lot of players come and go. And they've had some good teams here. And, you know, this year, hell, they won 25 games. So you got you to gotta give them a lot of credit because they've had a hell of a season. And so, you know, we got our hands filled. You know, we got to come and, and commit for 40 minutes on both ends of the floor and see what happens. Yeah, Coach, Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, I'm sure you know, obviously, those of us on the West Coast know how good St. Mary's has been for the past 15 or so years. Do your fans and do your players realize how good St. Mary's has been for the past 15 years or so? Well, I, I think they have. And, 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 you know, I don't let our players get too high or too low. At the end of the day, you got to respect whoever you play. And that's, that's professionalism. That's a part of sports. Um, so I don't think our guys are taking them lightly. Their record indicates they have had a hell of a year. And they're in the tournament just like we are. So, you know, both teams want to advance. You know, that's kind of how I look at it. Something's got to give. So only time will tell once the game gets started and finished. Mike, Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, and yeah, I remember in our college days, we came to Portland once for a college tournament, and uh, but I was curious uh, if you had any good uh, NBA memories as either a player or a coach here for anything that might have happened here in Portland. Well, I came here and <clears throat> when I was in college and playing the Far West Classic, and we got beat by Magic and that great team that went on to win the national title that year in the championship game. and. And then all my days of playing and coaching in the NBA of coming to Portland. I like Portland. It's a hell of a city. Um, so it's good to be back. Um, but it'd be even better if we can come out of here with a win. That's kind of how I look at it. <laughs> We're going to take a couple questions from the Zoom room. Uh, Dustin Dupirik, uh, go ahead. Yeah, Dustin DePierre, Bloomington Herald Times. Uh, Mike, obviously, uh, Parker and Miller have, have kind of struggled shooting the ball lately, but you've obviously stuck with them, uh, you know, giving them a bunch of minutes. What do you like about what you're getting from them outside of shooting and scoring? They're seniors. They're, they've been around. Um, I respect that. That's why I, I start them and I play them. Um, and they haven't shot the ball extremely well here of late. But I'm going to keep riding them until they do. And guys that are coming in off the bench are going to have to fill in around them and do their part as well, like Geronimo did last night, which was kind of nice to see. All right, back to the Zoom room. Uh, Tyler Tachman, go ahead. Tyler Tachman with Inside the Hall. Uh, Coach, you had talked about a couple of days ago um, that you want to create uh, great men in the program because that's what Bob Knight did for you. Um, they came back on that. Is there like any memories or moments that were kind of transformative experiences for you that helped shape you, something that, that Bob Knight taught you? I think my biggest moment was my senior year when everybody thought it was over when I had the back surgery. Um, and Knight just stuck stuck with me and hung in there with me. Man, that was a tough time for me. Um, you know, you play all your college career, never being hurt, and then you get to your senior year and something that drastic happens to the point where doctors are telling you you never play. 
he hung he he hung in there and, and was patient until I was able and you know he put all the good medical people around me the 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 uh, phys, physician that I had do the surgery uh, all the people who helped me get back doc councilman and people like that who helped me get back on my feet he hung in there with me and then he never forgot about me when I came back should he played me 40 minutes a game and <laughs> that was kind of nice you know in terms of helping me get back on my feet and, and helping that team win the Big Ten title that year. So I have him to thank for that as well. Coach Jeff Rabjohns, Pigs.com. Obviously, Parker Stewart, Miller Cop, Race Thompson, they all struggled at the same time the other night, combined for only eight points. Was there anything in particular that you saw that said, hey, this is, when you go back and watch film, this is why they struggled? Or what happened with those three guys on Tuesday? Hey, again, if you go back and look at the, the game, even X, you know, X missed three, three, four layups. Race missed some layups. And I just think, you know, first time in the tournament, man, I'm not using that as an excuse. None of these guys have been in the tournament play. And I think they were a little edgy, you know, last night in terms of how we started the game. Neither team can make shots. I mean, I looked at the scoreboard at three, four minute mark and it was, 1917. It was a really low scores, scoring game. So my, I felt good because our defense was pretty good, and I figured if whoever found some offense first had a shot in winning the game. And I thought we found it before they did. Mike Charlie Clifford again, Channel 8 Indy. You get through today. How do you address to tomorrow? Do you make any alterations to a normal game day schedule, considering the weird arrival? No, I mean, we, I got them here. We slept in a little bit. Uh, coaches, we didn't really sleep. We started prepping, getting ready for these guys to get out of the bed and come down and eat a little bit. And then we walked through some things. And we're going to go back and walk through some things. We watch film. And then tomorrow morning, we'll get up and do our normal routine and get ready to play. Mike Pegram from Peaks.com. I see Mary's is like ninth in the country in defensive efficiency. What about the makeup of that team allows them to be really good at that part of the game? Well, again, I mean, they have a, a senior team that's been together a while, well-coached team. Uh, their system is in place. And um, that's that puts them in a good position on both ends of the floor, I think. Uh, but. We've been pretty good defensively as well all year. Uh, had our ups and downs offensively. So we're going to have to rely on our defense to put us in a good position offensively to win this game. We're going to take our last question from the Zoom room. Uh, Tyler, go ahead. Coach, are, are there any uh, favorite memories you have from late night road trips in the NBA? And, and was there anything um, you know, someone you would call or foods you would have that would get you through those? I didn't hear that very well. We, you, can, yeah, can you repeat that? Can we get the a little bit more audio, please, for the Zoom? Tyler, go ahead and repeat your question. Yeah, Coach, um, going, I, I, do you have any favorite memories um, from, from road trips, late night road trips in the NBA? And, and what are some things that uh, maybe help you get through that, whether it be someone you talk to or, or snacks you had or anything like that? Well, like I told the guys, you know, we could never complain. They can anyway, and I know I won't about travel because in the NBA back in the old days, man, it might have been the worst travel in the world. I mean, there were red eyes that we had to catch to catch the next game the next day, and we're sleeping in chairs in the airport, you know, trying to get where we got to go. But that's what we signed up for as an NBA player, and it was a part of it. So they got it pretty damn good right now, I think. <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have. Right. Coach Woodson, thank you very much. Thank Best you. of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, recording of the press conference is available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com, and the transcript will be provided by ASAP and posted momentarily. Next press conference, 5 p.m. with the student athletes from Akron.
Check, 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 check. Okay.
All right, a couple of reminders for the last time today. Uh, first of all, please make sure to give your name and affiliation when you ask your question. And if you can direct your question specifically to one of our three student athletes, it would be appreciated. And also, no videos to be taken from inside the uh, press conference area. If you want to access the press conference video, you can download it off the NCAA uh, Digital Media Hub, or you can utilize the, uh, the decks in the uh, electronic media area. So our final student athlete press conference of the day is Akron. Joining us are student athletes Xavier Castaneda, Ali Ali, and Enrique Freeman. Gentlemen, welcome to Portland. And at this time, we will open it up to questions. We'll start right down here. Marla Ridenour, Akron Beacon Journal. This, either, anybody can answer this, but just you, you played a close game with Ohio, at Ohio State earlier in the year. Can that help you in any way with the crowd you're going to face tomorrow night? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we've come a long way from that game, and we still have the capability as that game, we, as we showed in that game, and we're still going to do that tonight, tomorrow. And, and I have one for Ali. Um, Coach Cronin was just here a little bit ago and mentioned your name in the same breath with Kevin Durant. Um, just does that kind of blow your mind? Uh, I mean, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's obviously uh, – Great to be uh, mentioned in the same uh, breath as Kevin Durant. He's obviously a great player. So, I mean. He did say he thought you could be the next NBA player from the Mid-American Conference. Has that always been your goal? Yeah, ever since I started playing basketball, like that's that's always been my dream. So I mean, hopefully uh, one day I'll be able to uh, fulfill that dream. Jake Marin, WZIP for Xavier. You average nearly 19 points a game in the MAC tournament. How do you carry that offensive momentum into the tournament? I think uh, just playing with confidence, uh, taking open shots, and uh, just staying aggressive um, and trying to win. That's about it. Jeff Longville, WZIP Akron. Uh, this is for Enrique. Given that UCLA went on a run last year, does that play a factor in how you're preparing for them? Uh, no. I think we pre prepare for everyone the same way. I'm just wondering if you're embracing the underdog. I saw some BPI thing that gave you like a 7% chance. I mean, how do you, does that inspire you in any way? Uh, I think inspire, inspire us for sure. I think every game, the last few games we've played, we've always been the underdog. So kind of used to it and kind of have that mentality going into the game. And there, but there have been some three and you know 14 upsets do you guys pay any attention to stats i uh, know no, no. question for ali i understand that kobe bryant is your favorite player and he has had an impact on this team can you explain his influence not only on the season but in particular now after winning the mac and playing in march madness in portland um i mean he's definitely had a big impact you know on the player and the person i am today and uh you know having that mentality of just you know winning regardless of who the opponent is and i think that's kind of uh the mindset we have as a group i mean like lately we've been predicted to lose i think like the last three or four games we've played so like enrique said like it's kind of not nothing new i guess so we're just ready and excited to go out there and compete for 40 minutes this is for all you guys uh being that this is a brand new experience for you are you nervous heading into the tournament uh, what I say, nervous? I say uh, we're excited to be here. It's a great opportunity for us uh, and the University of Akron. You know, um, it's just a great opportunity, and we're we're fully aware of that and and ready to embrace it. I would say probably more excitement than nervousness, but I mean, obviously, we'll find out tomorrow night. But definitely, definitely excited. I mean, this is something we kind of all watched growing up, and uh, now that we're here, we really can't be too nervous. We just got to go out there and play. Yeah, same thing. Definitely excited for tomorrow. Just I'm wondering about the trip. I mean, I don't know how long your flight was, but mine was like seven hours. So I'm just wondering how do you how you're feeling? Do you feel like are you on tournament adrenaline still? Like I guess. Yeah, I think so. I think the time change is a little funky, but I think we're pretty cool. Yeah, it's not. It could be worse. It could be like 10, 12 hours like overseas. So I mean, it's a it's a little bit of a difference, but. I mean, we're ready. We're excited. It's just, we're here. Mm -hmm. Chad Welker, Akron Athletics. Um, guys, can you each go through your story on how 
you got to the University of Akron, being that you're out here in the Pacific Northwest, just so people have the idea of where you came from and why you chose Akron? Uh, yeah, uh, I started my career uh, collegially at South Florida, and then uh, I transferred, and when I was in the portal, um, I knew a few guys who had gone to Akron, you know, Christian and um, Jeremy, and I talked to some guys, and I also knew Gross prior to coming to Akron. I knew him when he was at Illinois. So, um, you know, th just those relationships that I built uh, prior to being in college that uh, helped me to my decision to come to Akron. Um, I mean, I kind of got lucky. Ford was watching uh, somebody else at an AU tournament, and uh, it was probably like one of our final tournaments, and then they – uh, basically reached out on the first, you know, Division One team to give me a chance, and then, uh, you know, I trusted them. I, you know, my gut feeling told me it was the right thing to do, and uh, here we are. Uh, I'm from Cleveland, so I went to Akron um, for academics, and then they had an open tryout, and I tried out, and I walked on, and now I'm here. Jake Marin, WZIP Akron. Question for Enrique: A 14 seed has upset a three seed in each of the past four men's tournaments. How confident are you that the Zips will be able to continue this streak against the Bruins? Uh, I'm super confident in our, our team, and I think we go into every game trying to go 1-0, and so that's our goal for tomorrow. Other questions? Just wondering about your defense. What do you think makes you guys so, like, effective? Is it? aggressiveness is it an attitude just is the kind of athletes you have or what do you think is the key I think uh, just every play uh, playing with pride on defense uh, carrying out the, the game the scheme and everything like that um, I think just focusing every possession trying to keep your defender in front um, being a help side things like that uh, every possession really really counts so for tomorrow, what do you guys think is the biggest concern? Us. I mean, just doing what we do offensively and defensively and uh, just taking care of, you know, what we need to do on both sides of the ball to give us the best chance to win. Any other questions? All right. Xavier Castaneda, Ali Ali, Enrique Freeman, thank you very much. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll have Coach up here in thank a matter of moments. Joining us now is Akron head coach John Gross. Uh, coach, welcome to Portland. Sorry about the traffic. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take time for an opening statement, then we'll open up to questions. Sure. Um, obviously, super excited about the opportunity 
uh, to compete tomorrow. Um, we've had just a great run here over the last two to three weeks. Uh, they're really a neat group uh, to coach. And it really starts with their character. Um, obviously, tomorrow night, you know, or afternoon, I guess, time zone wise, I got a six something here, right? 9.50 back at home, Marla. Um, you know, obviously, got a great opportunity tomorrow night against a really good UCLA team. The more I watch them on film and they're healthy now, you know, I've always had a great deal of respect for Mick. I've known him for a long time. And uh, they look like, when I'm watching them on film, now they're healthy, like a one or two seed, to be quite honest. Uh, you can see why they were ranked early on, top whatever they were in the country. Um, five starters returning. Really impressed with them offensively and defensively. Their ability to take care of the ball offensively, I think, is what really stands out. Really skilled. You can tell they're really smart. Have played together for a while. And then defensively, you know, obviously their numbers from a defensive efficiency standpoint are terrific. And then they rebound it well, as his teams have always done, wherever he's been. So great respect for him, certainly in UCLA, and looking forward to the challenge. All right, we'll go ahead and open up the questions. Marla Ryden, our Akron Beacon Journal. Yeah, John, the guys seem really confident. Do you think, have you seen that grow just during the eight-game winning streak? No question about it. I think, obviously, you know, the – They've had some success, so now they're more, you know, a little bit more confident. But they also, I think trust is a big word, Marla. I think they really trust each other and understand the strengths of each other and how to fit all that together. And there's a trust level, I think, from staff to players right now uh, that we trust them, that they're going to execute uh, what we need to get done. I think there's a trust level from the players to the coaching staff as well. Player to player, there's just – you know, we've always played with some toughness and togetherness and a lot of courage. We've came back from big deficits throughout the year. We've found ways to win close games. But I think the separator here lately has been that trust word. There's just an element of, of trust, uh, camaraderie, and chemistry amongst the group here over the last eight games. And Mick was just in here. He actually sit, compared Ali to Kevin Durant in terms of making guarded shots. Um, <laughs> Can I say the same thing about Haquez? <laughs> no, but he's just, pretty close. He does a lot of the same things. It's interesting watching him. Very similar. But I'm just, I mean, that seems a little premature, but do you see flashes of what he can do that is different than sure. most? Well, I think with Ali, you know, he's always had upside, and I think now it's starting to come to fruition. And he's, he's now a, he's a three-level scorer, and I agree with Mick. He can make tough shots. He can pass it and make guys better. He can play with his back to the basket. He can play facing the basket. He can play as the ball handler in a pick and roll. He can play as the screener in a pick and roll. He's just so versatile. Um, and I think that's what makes him. He's really a versatile defender as well at the other end. And that's what makes him a really good player, I think. If I could capsulize it in one word, Marla, it would be versatility. Jeff Longville, WZIP Akron. Um, what is the mindset for preparing your players for the possibility of playing multiple games in a short amount of time? Yeah, no, great question. You know, we have a saying, preparation trumps pressure. But we don't just say that in season three and season four. So season one for us is non-conference, season two conference, season three conference tournament, season four postseason. You know, that's something that we take a lot of pride in year round. So it's not something we just turn on, you know, like a light switch. And uh, our guys have really bought into that. I will give the 2019-20 team a lot of credit for that because they were really elite in preparation and taught a lot of these guys, whether it's Greg, Ali, Mike D, Enrique Freeman, what that looks like. And Enrique referenced that the other night uh, after the MAC championship game. Um, so they really embrace that. They want to learn. They want to know how we're attacking, what we're doing. And they really embrace that, that preparation piece. And so I think what that does is that allows you to focus. Once you've got that, um, you know, my stepdad used to call it hay in the barn. Now you can kind of go out and play, right? You've done everything, tried to do everything right. And then I think they understand that it's not a perfect game. You know, it's not. They're not going to play perfect. We're not coaching perfect. The officials aren't. Everybody's trying to do the best they can and minimize mistakes and be great at what they do. And so I think what's happened with this group is they understand there's good, bad, and ugly I always tell them, in life and ball. And so the people, the organizations, the teams, the staffs, the people that deal with that the best 
oftentimes are at an extreme advantage and just able to get to the next thing, you know, and move on. And I think they really embrace that as well. Um, that, and lastly, I think the one game at a time deal, you know, they've really embraced that. Jake Murrin, WZIP Akron. The players mentioned how you weren't favored to win your past couple of games, and that trend continues. How does that affect or even motivate this team going forward? You know, I, you, know, you try to guess, obviously, what's going through their minds and hearts. That's our job as coaches, right, to try to figure that out. But I, I just think my gut tells they're pretty motivated. Regard, right? They're in the NCAA tournament, right? This is a great opportunity. They're excited to play. Um, they know the other thing we've talked about is, hey, man, it really just is up. We've got to believe. It's the people that are in the locker room. But you're right. I mean, they were underdog. At least my dad told me. I don't even pay attention that much to that. But underdog Buffalo, underdog uh, against Kent, underdog against Toledo in the semis. You know, it just is what it is. You know, can't control that. Worry about the things you can control, uh, which is what I was alluding to earlier about the group. I just wonder, can you even remember how far back you go with Mick? Yeah, long time. Uh, obviously, as, as assistants, as associate head coaches, as head coaches, and yeah, long, long time. Yeah, I have great, obviously, I mentioned earlier, I have great respect for him and how he does it and the way his teams play. And, you know, they're, uh, they're really, really good. They've been good for a long time. And are you concerned at all about the travel? I mean, it was pretty long flight but I mean yeah, I know I mean, they're young but once again I, I can't control that right I've, I've kind of maybe early on Marla in my career I would have but you know I can, we can't control that so we got to move and figure out what what what's in front of us what are we dealing with how do we deal it with deal with it in the best way possible and so we've tried to get them adjusted you know obviously fortunately we've got really good support staff and we talk all the time we actually had a sleep doctor do a seminar with us, and we actually brought up that very question. Traveling, for example, Marla, east coast to west coast or vice versa, how do we do that? What if it's a two-day advance in terms of when you arrive? What if it's a one-day advance? And so we utilized some of that education to the best of our ability to try to make, you know, the transition, obviously, from Akron time to Portland time. What did the sleep doctor say that you used? Well, I think you have to decide, right, in a nutshell, whether or not you're going to try to stay on Eastern time or whether or not you're going to transition to West Coast time, Pacific time. So, obviously, with the time of the game being as such, you know, we made the decision to transition, and so we've been working on that since our arrival. Looking at the Bruins, what do you think is the biggest concern for you guys? Where do you want me to start? <laughs> um, obviously, got a lot of experience. Five starters back from the Final Four team uh, offensively and defensively they're efficient on both sides of the ball but again I think and I said this earlier uh, in an earlier interview you look at the turnover differential for them their percentage versus opponent percentage you look at the rebounding you know you, you've got to compete in those two areas those are probably my two biggest concerns One of the biggest parts of this team all year has been the defense. You know, Enrique Freeman, MAC Defensive Player of the Year, number one in the conference. What do you think this defense looks like tomorrow night against the Bruins? Hopefully efficient for us and trying to make them inefficient, right? Easier said than done. Good players, good coach, good scheme. Um, but, you know, that's what all of us are trying to do in this tournament, right? And when we say efficiency, it's points per possession. It's a fancy... Those are fancy coaches' phrases for saying, hold them, try to prevent them from scoring, and try to score a few points yourself, right? So that, that I think, is, you know, on the forefront of our minds, obviously, you know, and how, and how we do that. It's easier said than done because of their experience, because they have size, they've got great length and athleticism on the wings, they've got great guard play, uh, steadying force in Campbell. Um, so... You know, we're, we're looking forward to the challenge, though. Any other questions? Right there. So since UCLA went on that magical run to the Final Four last year, is that a factor in how you're preparing for them? 
No, I mean, obviously, just more from a respect thing, obviously, uh, for their, their players have accomplished that, right? That's always going to be a part of their journey. But in terms of our team versus their team this year, you know, that run last year, um, I've, I've told those guys that, you know, tomorrow it's they're playing and we're playing. It's a, diff it's a different year, you know. Playing at Ohio State, I know it was ages ago, but the, will that atmosphere at least maybe help in some regard? Yeah, I think so. All those experiences, right? Experience is a great teacher. Um, I appreciate you reminding me of that game. Uh, but, yeah, no, I mean, we played well. Played really, really well in a rare, really tough environment against a very, very good team and a very well-coached team as well. So, you know, obviously that's part of our journey this year, and I think, you know, does that give our guys some confidence? You know, I, I think so. But at the end of the day, when that ball tips tomorrow, we're thinking about how do we win one possession at a time? How do we work together to try to get a stop? Or how do we work together to try to get our shot as they continue to talk about that as a, as a team? Chad Welker, Akron Athletics. We've heard from Xavier. We've heard from Enrique. We've heard from Ali. There's five other guys that are on this team. Can you just touch a little bit on them? Uh, Michael Wynn, Garvin Clark. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, right, it's a, it's a team, and we've been playing as such, especially during this eight-game stretch. But I thought Dawson was big in Cleveland. Obviously, shot-making brings toughness and inspiration as soon as he walks into any room. You know, he just has that type of personality and, and mojo, if you will. Greg Tribble's a leader. Um, I, I trust him. He communicates well on the floor with me, with his teammates. He's very encouraging. He's great in huddles, elite defender. Uh, you know, obviously played his best basketball of his career, Chad, in, in Cleveland here recently. And then the guys that come off the bench for us, you know, Bandego and Wynn and Clark have all had great moments. Clark in particular in the championship game, Bandego in the Buffalo game, and really Winnie throughout. You know, I teased him. He had zero points in one game in like 13 minutes. He had seven rebounds and five fouls. And I said, man, at least your rebound total was higher than your fouls in the game. So we, we like to have a good time with them. Um, we got really good guys, make some, make some fun to coach. And then we got the other guys, right, that aren't the primary rotation right now that are a big part of what we do as well. Going to Enrique Freeman, the, obviously the tryout and the walk-on experience. Back then, did you see the ceiling that he has right now back when he first tried out? Are you asking me that from a one-hour tryout that I see that he would become the MAC tournament MVP and a MAC defensive player of the year and an all-league player? Yeah, did you see that in him from the tryout? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you saw his length. Uh, obviously, he's a little lighter then than he is now. Had hands, had good motor that day, was a really good mover, and just liked his vibe. You know, it's hard not to like his vibe. Do background check figure out, man, this guy's on academic scholarship and is a great kid, high character. So we put him on the team thinking we didn't have a lot to lose in that situation because you don't see guys 6'7 with that type of length and some of those attributes I just mentioned typically show up at a walk-on trial. And so we keep him. He's on the scout team that year in the championship year 2019-20 and has a good year, keeps getting better. And we're, by the time we got to the end of the year, we're like, man, maybe he'll get in our rotation. Then he comes back in August of 2020, 20 pounds heavier, had really worked, quite honestly, during the pandemic while he was at home. Don't know if he has much of a choice. His mom's a Cleveland City police officer and a great lady, him and his five sisters, and runs a tight ship. So he worked at it, came back, and he was much better. And uh, it was pretty obvious that he was going to play play for us and uh, kept him out of the starting lineup in the first game. He gets 21 rebounds. and. At that point, I had an inkling, but once he got the 21 rebounds, you know, but he's obviously improved a great deal and gotten a lot better in a very short period of time, and a lot of it should be attributed to his character and his work capacity. This will be our last question. Just wondering what you're doing tomorrow. Are you going to let them watch some of the other games, or you got plans for the whole meetings all day? Or yeah, you know, we on game day, the one thing I try to do, Marla, when I was younger, again, I keep referencing that, we'd probably meet about eight times tomorrow. <laughs> um, but I've got to make sure I get a run in tomorrow. First of all, it's really important. 
get a great cup of Starbucks coffee in the morning, large or venti, I think is what they call it. <laughs> and then uh, we'll have a good, you know, we'll have a good meeting, good healthy meeting. We'll move around a little bit tomorrow, and we'll try to get here early enough, just like we did in Cleveland, so they can get a taste of the environment before they take the floor. All right. Go John Thanks, Gross. guys. Thank you Go very Zips. much. Best of luck tomorrow. And that's it for our press conferences today. A reminder that a recording of this press conference will be available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com, as will the transcript. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow. <laughs>